Now a hugely popular iron amongst my viewers, well it didn't go down too well with me until I tried them. You see this style of club, well there's definitely an element of golf snob about me and what I soon realised was I was completely wrong. You see when I finally did review these clubs I classed them as the easiest I'd ever tried. They're from Cleveland, they are their Launcher XL Halos and uh, well as good as they were I now think they've got a huge problem coming their way. And I'll take that. So skip forward a few months, it's now Feb of 2023, a new product has been launched that could pose a big threat to the future success of those Cleveland Irons. That club is from TaylorMade and it's a club I am hugely impressed by. That TaylorMade club is in fact from their new HD lineup and it's a very, very different club than we've seen from TaylorMade before in terms of their iron lineup. And a lot of you people have commented it's very much a copy, let's say, of what Cleveland have done. I'd argue differently. This is a fair bit different than the Cleveland product, which we're gonna have a closer look at in today's video. But before you go any further, what I just want to talk about is the price of these two irons. And that price is probably different than I expected it to be. And what I mean by that is TaylorMade being the brand that they are and being the kind of, the, well, we relate it to expensive clubs in many ways, certainly of the releases this year. Their irons are 128 per stick. The Cleveland's are 110, that's in UK pounds. Now that's 18 pound a club, and you could argue that's quite a big difference, it's not the type of difference that I was expecting. And over a six club set, it's a hundred pound difference. And what I would certainly want to do is if I'm spending six and seven hundred pound on my set of irons I want to keep in the bag for a few years, then maybe that hundred pound isn't enough to sway me one way or the other based on price. So I found that particularly interesting. But there's one other department that you've got to overcome or at least like. And that's the looks. Today's video is brought to you in partnership with Hot Golf, the online golf megastore, bringing you the hottest deals in golf. And of course, the clubs featured in today's video. Find the link to the Hot Golf website in the description below and check out some incredible giveaways and offers. And it's fair to say that those looks are very different. Both of these clubs are very different in terms of the norm, what we assume to what irons look like, but then they're also very different looking to each other. And I thought, to be quite honest with you, until I got the head to head and both of them in the bag, I thought they were very similar in sort of size, shape and profile. And in some areas of the bag they are, but in others they're not. And start off with the two five irons and just have a look how different these two clubs are. The Halo or Cleveland product is very much more like a hybrid slash iron, if you like, a combination of the two. Whereas even though that Stealth HD is a bigger overall profile, you can see it's far slimmer than that of the Cleveland. And I think that is something that again, separates these two clubs quite significantly. Although at the short end of the bag, you'll see a bit later on, they are very, very similar in their profiles. So a much more progressive set in the Cleveland's in very big to not so big down the short end. And then in the TaylorMade HD lineup, you've got a profile that pretty much sits fairly constant throughout the set. But the question is, how do these separate in terms of performance? Because at the end of the day, that's gonna be a key factor perhaps the most important factor in your decision. That was a five iron from the Halo. What they do incredibly well is launch the ball high, incredibly good ball speeds, and right throughout the set, in my initial review at least, I was super impressed in how these things perform. So in today's video, we're gonna go five iron, seven iron, nine iron, one against the other, out on the course, forget dry ball data. What do I think separates these two clubs? And if I was to choose one, which might it be? So then the same iron from the HD lineup, and I've got to say nowhere near as good of a strike, slightly off the bottom grooves, but that's what is so impressive about both of these sets of irons is they're packed with forgiveness. And what I mean by that is off center strikes like that, which I can see is right out those bottom grooves, still performs far better than it perhaps should do. So at that price point and with those looks, do either of these two irons appeal to you or is it still 
that kind of golf snobbery that exists with the likes of me when you still want to see a particular style of club address a club that you associate with being an iron or are any of these two going to persuade you to make their way into your bag let me know in the comment section down below right so a couple of long irons and to be honest with you equally as impressive although i would argue that um, well in that case the cleveland performed far better than i did with the uh, tailor-made product but i base that purely on the quality of the swing so next up a couple of seven irons we're just over that sort of 150 in fact to the flag it's topping out at sort of the 160 area but the kind of area that i'd be expecting to play seven iron from let's see what this thing does cleveland that is by the way that's a really good strike again picked it up neat is right on the flag to be honest with you very much dependent on what it's done in terms of the yardage but can't knock this thing and i can't knock these irons full stop so there's going to be I mean, a bit of a spoiler, there's going to be no criticism of these irons, either sets of them. They perform so, so well, and I just don't know why, as golfers, we keep ignoring them. Or maybe that's just me. Into the 7 iron, and I was just having a look at the sort of... The width of sole, really, is the thing that differs greatly. <clears throat> and although they're closer in terms of their profile in the 7 iron than they are in the 5, where there's a noticeable difference, still a more streamlined version in the stealth hd product but that makes no difference what will this thing do in terms of performance at this stage then uh, the swings we put on the cleveland have been super impressive now that again is an absolute rocket ball um, much better strike arguably a tad down the left it's always going to be difficult for me to film a head-to-head -head because at my level i can't really consistently perform with two exact same shots so down the left it looks to me though like carry distance is very very similar maybe a tad longer again just from that club head speed of generated seemed a little bit quicker swing than that of the cleveland but yet again they're off this tight lie they pick the ball up they launch the ball high the ball speeds are good hard to again sort of comment on spin right now but again from dry ball data they both do this thing incredibly well they're so impressive you know a couple of long irons couple of mid irons i'm actually just going to switch back and hit another couple of of the five irons to be honest with you because for me these irons in particular sort of really <clears throat> shine if you like at that kind of the forgiveness elements and that's the long end of the bag so i like the kind of help and assistance these give both of them but there is one thing that separates them both in the shots, the four shots that I've hit so far. And I just want to see if we're able to pick up on that with the next two that I hit. Right, let's go with the Cleveland first. That's an unreal strike, to be honest with you. One of the best balls I've hit today. It's not been my best ball striking day. But that five iron is defies what well put it this way the easiest thing i've just come to mind is that if i add my existing five iron i ain't getting that ball right probably not getting that ball speed and uh, what that has done is hugely impressive stealth over to you because that takes one beat and i just hope i can put another swing on similar to that and you know what that's that's not a bad effort to be fair great shape again just trying to look down where they've both landed not a great deal to separate them the thing i'm trying to pick up on and you ain't going to get it i don't think but we'll take a punt that you picked up on some audio what taylor made have done really well is they've got a softer sound and what, what i mean they're probably more like their existing stealth irons let's put it that way whereas the sort of hollow bodied um cleveland is more like the sound that you would get off a hybrid let's say so a more clickier sound now i've got no issues with the way a hybrid sounds but the problem is is when you're expecting to hear a certain noise from an iron it is a bit different so they're very much more hybrid like not only in their looks but how they sound whereas these are more like an iron in both the way they play and the way they sound i hope that made some sort of sense to you because i was struggling a bit now then when you get down to the shorter end of the bag it changes up quite a bit because now the two nine irons in terms of their width of sole at least they look very very similar indeed so the changes there's very much a progressive set but there's much more of a leap 
from the Cleveland set, from what you see from the five iron to when you get down to the nine iron to, um, to that of the HD. The question is, it's a little short chip and run, what kind of response or feel do I get from the Cleveland first of all? Well again, you know, what, what I really like about the Cleveland product, or the, not, not the Cleveland, this style of iron, is that width of sole just slides along the, uh, the turf. If I'm honest with you, I mean, there was potential there with a, with a wedge in hand, with a thin sole on a wedge, I reckon I could have possibly dug in a little bit there. That certainly helped me out the width of sole and slid along the turf and produced a result that was sort of acceptable. So much better clip there from the um, from the stealth product but in all fairness that was very much down to uh, my um, execution of the shot either way I take them one thing I've said throughout the video is that for me the bit that's still surprising and again noticeable at the short end of the bag is just that little bit of softer feel and less clicky sound than you get from the tailor-made product than you do from the Cleveland but either way the question is, can you play uh, bulky irons and still get a little bit of feel out, out of them in and around the green? And the answer is 100% yes you can. Now we're going to pitch up on the 100 in marker and there's a good reason for that because again, often the criticism of this style of iron is the fact that well, you can't really play much of a half shot, you can't sort of manipulate the club if you like to do something you'd like it to do other than a sort of full all out swing and again, I've not really seen that, I've seen the opposite. If you can execute the shot, you can do it with this club as much as you can do with any other. We'll start off again with the Cleveland, like I said, 100 yards in. And for me, this 99 is probably playing about 130. So we need to take a little bit off. And let's see if we can even maybe flight this down a little bit. We didn't flight it down. Well, that's right on the flag. In fact, that's a really impressive result and again I'll switch over from exactly the same position and go into the stealth you know there's so many myths in golf or around golf clubs that is and often like I said golf snobs like me who I referred to earlier you look at clubs like these and you think you can't do certain things with them um, and seriously I just wonder how hard we're making this game at times right Again, really nice pickup. Maybe leaked a tad down the right hand side by comparison. But again, the ability to just take a little bit off, nice, smooth, and easy swing. How good do both of these clubs pick that ball off the turf? It's really impressive. So, from a short game perspective, the short end of the bag, that is, both of these do exceptionally well. And like I said, from a profile perspective, are very, very similar indeed. Right, we'll leave it there. All done. I could carry on hitting shots all day. I don't think we're going to learn a great deal more. The thing is about both these sets of irons, as I said during the video, was that it's not really a criticism of either of them, to be quite honest with you. It's about adapting your mind to accept the kind of profile and head shape that we're not accustomed to. But they perform really, really well, both of them. I said that Cleveland had a bit of a problem with this new HD lineup. I'm not sure they do after doing the test because I still think they're very different sets of irons. It's easy to categorize these as the same just because they're a bit more bulbous than the norm. But these are very, very different. Like I said, just looking down at the bag now, the two five irons together are chalk and cheese. Very much more hybrid-like, as I've already stated. I hit a five iron a couple of shots ago, which was arguably the best shot I've hit all day. And I've not been playing great today, don't get me wrong, but I hit it and walked 50 yards and thought, why would you not play those irons? They're just so, so good in terms of what they did. And I know for a fact that I could be there all day long with any other iron and it isn't going to outperform it. So I think that's huge credit to what Cleveland have done in this set of irons. But the reasons you're going to go for one over the other is going to be based on aesthetics because they're very different. There is that price difference. Um, and then it's that sound that I referred to as being more hybrid like with the Clevelands. Is that something that perhaps you're positive uh, with and it's not a negative, which it might slightly be for me personally. Either way, go and try these two sets of irons out if you need a bit of help with your game. They're game improvement irons and they do exactly that, in my opinion, with an abundance of forgiveness. Right, as ever, don't forget, 
You can buy both these sets of irons from our partner at Hog Golf, so go and give them a look, check them out. Um, I've got no more to add, really. Thank you for watching, as ever, and I'll see you all tomorrow night.